Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Adam and Orange, where I built a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Welcome to my review of the MU Optimus Prime build. One of the larger things that you can make 3D metal model wise. I've been working on this for a while now. You may have already seen some of the videos that I've put out. I ended up put out, putting out seven different build videos for this particular model because I did it in sections and it took quite a while to put that together and I'm trying to carefully put it down without knocking it over. It's fairly stable but it seems to kind of lean forward just a little bit. And this is the box that the model comes into or comes in. Got it in the mail like this packaged in some tape and some covering. You will notice it's a little bit beat up. It's not quite packaged as well as the Megatron model. It basically just has a foam inside and everything's inside of that. This model comes with, I believe it's eight sheets of metal. Four of those large sheets that are about the size of the box. It has three sheets that are a bit smaller and then it has one long, thin, thin-ish gold sheet of small parts. Also included is a nice catalog of instructions. You'll notice outside it's in color, but the inside pretty much goes black and white with the occasional orange color to indicate something is being folded, but it's pretty detailed. Instructions walks you all the way through. Once you get to the back page to the final assembly, you've got a little bit of color again. It also comes with a neat little collector's card with a QR code on the back that I have found personally that if I scan that QR code with my phone sometimes it takes me to a website which I which is not in English and I really can't understand anything on it sometimes it doesn't take me anywhere at all so it just kind of doesn't always seem to want to load I don't think it's the card's fault I think it's just the website and I'm in the US and this website is not so eh. it also included is a set of six finger cots four fingers and two thumbs to help keep the fingerprints off of the model as you're building it. I found myself that not even halfway through the model I had pretty well shredded at least some of those finger cots and started to replace them with my own. I do like the finger cots that come with this better than the ones that I'm getting from Amazon right now. I'm still like looking for finger cots that are similar uh, thickness as these though I've not looked them very far. But I wanna, I'm looking at my notes here because I want to tell you, it took me, I, I did the math, it took me just over 24 hours worth of work to put that together. 24 hours and 52 minutes by my calculations to find all the parts, clip them out, fold, bend, and shape, and put them into place until I finally made this big guy right here. And it was a lot of work, a lot of detailed work. It took a lot of time, fair amount of frustration, but in the end, it is absolutely an amazing model to put together. And this is my second MU uh, Transformers model that I've built. I've built the Megatron model already. I've done a review for that. Oddly enough, this one came before the Megatron. I believe the Megatron, I want to say it's the second, but came after this. And the MU has since released several more Transformers models, large models. And you've got, this is a G1 model, Generation 1. There's later generations, models of Optimus Prime and Megatron. There's other models coming in the way. More stuff in the works, I understand. But today we're talking about this one. And it was a long, difficult, but enjoyable build and a wonderful final result. I want to say almost disappointment in the way some of the parts of this were constructed. The way they came together, especially... And the legs right here, there's a inside black part that you fold up first and then the silver part folds around it. And there's a lot of similar bits in the Megatron build where you have parts that wrap around other parts to make a bigger and more detailed hole or section. And I was really impressed with the Megatron model, how some of those parts came together and how they just kind of flipped into place with a little bit of... Uh, um, coaxing you could get these parts into place and you have this really intricate layered and detailed piece and I see that they did some of the same things with Optimus Prime but it wasn't quite as cleverly done in my opinion and that's not to say bad about Optimus Prime this is an amazingly detailed 
in-depth and layered model, but I can see how they kind of evolved the process a little bit when they moved on to Megatron. And, and I guess the best example of that in my mind would be going back to these upper parts of the legs, there was an inner black piece that you fold up and then you have this outer silver piece that's already folded up and it kind of wraps around the inner black piece and a couple more parts attached to it. The inner black piece kind of gave me trouble. It's kind of H-shaped and the instructions tell you to fold it and fold this and fold a few parts together and there's a couple of bottom flaps that it tells you to fold in and honestly I kind of learned myself don't fold those in right away like the instructions say because there's a piece that attaches later that what happened with me is I folded those in like the instructions say but I didn't need to right away and I fought with trying to wrap the larger silver piece around the black piece part of what makes it layered and I fought with getting those tabs into place and one of those inner black pieces got flexed back and forth as I struggled with it because it didn't just come together easily it's kind of a complicated fold and it didn't easily come together there was a lot of trial and error trying to get the tabs into the slots to the point where that inner black piece joint flexed and finally broke and that was very disappointing that was somewhat early in the build and I thought you know great I've just spent 50 some dollars on this model actually this model was given to me but it's a 50 some dollar model and I've broken an important piece that holds the leg together. I did manage to get it together and I did end up using some super glue to hold things together to make it work to move forward because unfortunately with the MU models you can't just call them up or send them a message and say hey a piece broke can I get a replacement. You have to buy a whole new model. They don't, they don't do replacements. I did make an attempt myself to get a replacement piece and I was able to get that one piece because they were already shipping me a model to review because they really liked the video that I did, I guess, on Megatron and wanted to send me one of their newer models to build and review as, I guess, sort of a thank you. And that's coming up soon, but because they were already sending me that and because I had a lot of communication, I was able to get that one piece. I don't think there really is normally a lot of communication or a way to do that. So I'm sitting here thinking, I've broken this piece, now what do I do? I managed to get it glued back together, but I can't personally say I'd have a better suggestion of how to design that part. But it seems like there would be a better way because it just was it was so difficult and there was so much flexing that that was ultimately called the fail caused the failure. And the two pieces on the bottom that flipped up, because I'd already flipped them up, they kept getting bumped as I was struggling with the upper upper section until one of those flaps got weak. And when I went to connect the bottom section that goes on later, one of those flaps broke, and that's you know really what caused me to have to use the super glue. So that one part broke in two pieces because it was a difficult design to put together, and there was too much flexing, and that did it in. When I got to the other leg, I was more careful about that. I didn't fold those bottom pieces up until it was time to connect something. I tried a bit of a different strategy, and I was able to get it together without breaking anything. There is, I believe, an arm piece on Megatron that comes together and layered similar to this leg piece, but it's approached in a very different fashion where you have an inner piece that's more solid and a couple outer pieces that slap on top of that, like one attaches and the other kind of flips over it. And that method works really well. So I can kind of see how the company, how MU has maybe advanced their design of make things come together in such a way that they're layered it comes together easier easier with less risk of damaging the parts and there's so much to talk about with this model because like the Megatron there is layers and lots of detail in this particular model like these leg pieces right here there's piece there's sections inside of sections and sections on top of sections where you have detail buried underneath and it's kind of hard to see with the arms and stuff but pieces underneath and inside of other pieces and you've got so much fin and grill work and slats here and there and those definitely took some time pieces on the inside of other pieces and layered sections and interesting angles and lots and lots of little little tiny round gold pieces and silver pieces dotted everywhere and I will say that some of those little tiny gold pieces were almost too much 
and then you've got like this detailed section right here that takes a while just to build this section with all these round and two pieces that go inside of this piece it it takes a lot of time to build all this detail but in the end look at this guy it's totally worth it completely worth it such an amazing amazing build there's so many things to talk about to be careful of and watch out for when making this model and you know you can certainly go look at all the different build videos because I make notes and tips as I build it things that stand out to me to be careful of or think mistakes that I made that you know maybe you'll make the same mistakes don't here's why here's what you should do stuff like that and this is a review I want to talk about the model so I'm going to touch on some of those things a few tips I guess that I would give when building this model one of the things I would strongly suggest is get some sort of box, container, magnet, something to keep little extra parts in. Not extra as in you're never going to use them, but extra as in there are many situations where you clip out parts. Like these bottom blue sections of the leg start off as one big large part with a lot of empty space in it that you have to fold up. Well, they fill those empty spaces with other parts that you have to clip out and set to the side because some of them you may have clipped out before you got to that leg part. Some of those pieces don't come until later. So you have to clip them out, set them to the side, and save them for later. One thing that I wish I had done is have some sort of container to put them in. Because this build took so long, and because I did it during the holiday seasons, there were a lot of breaks where I went out of town and had other things to tend to. And what happened is, despite trying to keep them all in one place all together, despite using a magnet to hold things together, there's still a couple of small pieces that got lost because of all of the shuffling around that occurred. So one of the suggestions that I would recommend is find something to keep those spare parts in, maybe even get a magnetic sheet and something that a note, a piece of uh, painter's tape that you can write on so you can actually write the part number because while some of them will have the part number on or with them, some of them will not, and you may not remember which sheet it comes off of. I was able to figure it all out, at least the parts that I could find, which was 98, 99% of them, but that could possibly be forgotten and be difficult down the road. Which part, which sheet did this come off of, which part number is it? So that would be one of my big suggestions. Another suggestion, I didn't really have any trouble with Optimus Prime, possibly because I was more careful, but with Megatron, with the Megatron build, I had problems towards the end of the build where there were some long thin parts in the metal sheets that got flexed back and forth because you're constantly picking up these big metal sheets that, you know, they're, they're huge and once you start clipping all the parts out of them, they get more flexible and then some of the thin parts got broken from flexing the joints too much because, I mean, it, you know, what can you do to avoid it? Try to keep it more stiff. But because I kept picking up this sheet clip and all small and parts putting it back, there was one long thin piece that ended up breaking and I had some issues with that. I didn't have those issues with Optimus Prime and maybe that's because they weren't quite the same long thin pieces and maybe I was more careful. I've started keeping my metal sheets on pieces of paper and picking them up by the pieces of paper to move them around to limit how much I flex them. But that's one of the things to be mindful of during this rather large build. Now I found with Optimus Prime's instructions, with his instructions on this particular kit, there's a little bit of interpretation that I didn't expect. I don't remember seeing this with the Megatron builds, and I don't see this that much with, say, Metal Earth builds or Peace Cool builds, but with this one, there were a lot of mirrored parts where, you know, there was a piece on one side that was mirrored to the other side, and what happens is in the instructions, they'll show you uh, two different part numbers for this, one for the one side, one for the other, and they'll point an arrow at the particular one they're showing. So part part G31 and and C28. They're mirrors of the same part or maybe even the same part and they'll show an arrow point at one. And then that attaches to another part which is also two mirrored parts and they'll give both part numbers and they'll point one of those numbers will point at the part. And the idea is you clip both of those parts out and in the instructions it shows you how to put these two parts together and how to fold them and shape them but it doesn't show you how to do the other two and what you have to realize is the other two come together in the same way but mirrored opposite 
and it took me just a little bit to figure that out and that occurs quite a bit where it'll show you multiple parts duplicate parts two parts and it'll give you two different completely different part numbers and with this because it's so many sheets it's sheet and then the part number on that sheet it'll point to the one part and it'll show you how to fold that part it won't show you the other one you have to interpret and realize you're folding it pretty much the same but so that it's mirrored and that's one of the things you have to watch out for during this build and when it comes to these fins or grill sections like you've got here on the legs and up here they kind of each one you hand them a little bit differently that is one of the challenges of this model and honestly at this point i can't remember which one went which way but there were there was one set where very much like the megatron build i used one of my magnets to hold the pieces down while i attached everything and fold the other side up that worked really well another one uh, the magnet wouldn't have been quite so helpful and you attach one side at the bottom and you start closest to where all the pieces fold and as you go up you fold the side up and attach one tab at a time and that worked pretty good one of these the way the frame worked out it didn't really work to fold things up over the tabs you really had to kind of put the tab in one side and kind of twist it a little and put it in the other side and flatten it back out so you have to work the best you can with each one and there's more details in the actual build videos for that and I've tried to make the build videos so that it names which section it's working on if you need to refer to that but that's one of the more challenging pieces of this there's a lot of different fins and they make it a little more it just makes it more complicated more challenging to put together I had issues with some of the pieces fitting up here it was really tight stretch and there's some tabs around this part where it was difficult to get to and adding things together and it just didn't seem to be enough room difficulty you know lack of room making it difficult to get things into place and folding things nice and evenly because of the thin parts it was just just challenging be patient take deep breaths and work your way through it this thing has a lot of little round gold pieces scattered everywhere some of them not so bad like that some of them are difficult there's little tiny ones on the inside of the leg I think one of them may be missing because I, I lost one or two little gold pieces it's kind of hard to see there's so many little tiny round gold pieces that are just difficult they're little tiny and they're difficult to work with and difficult to get in their spot and they're really easy to lose and you go to all the trouble of getting them in and as someone else has said you kind of wonder if anybody's even going to notice. But it is that de level of detail that really makes this such a great model to put together. Another interesting note about the Optimus Prime build is with the tabs. And I noticed in the instructions with Optimus Prime and in the instructions with the Megatron build is that the tabs have a little bit of a flare to them. They're not just straight up. They have a little bit of a flare at one point. Now, in the uh, Megatron build, I saw that in instructions, but I don't remember seeing that on any of the tabs. With the Optimus Prime build, I do remember seeing that flare on pretty much every tab. And there's an advantage and disadvantage to that. The advantage, advantage is once you get that tab kind of snapped into place, it holds itself better than the straight tabs, which can come in handy when you're trying to get more than one part or more than one tab lined up in a slot. One snaps in it's for the most part good to go and you have time to get other things aligned and you have time to get it folded and twisted and more secure and it can pop back out but not easily the disadvantage is and I ran into this several times is if you have parts that are thin or small and you're trying to get that notched or flared tab into the slot and it catching and you are having trouble applying enough pressure to push it through because the parts want to bend twist wrinkle fold whatever so that's disadvantage to that so it's kind of a is it really worth the advantage or not i don't miss it on the megatron builds and i don't miss that they have don't have flare tabs on pretty much everything else i build so i'm kind of eh, on the fence on that one on the other hand, with this particular build, I noticed with some of the black parts, like for instance that H-shaped part in one of the legs that I had so much trouble with breaking, one of the issues I had with that and a few other parts off of that same black sheet was that the slots were not cut wide enough or whatever black coating they put over was too thick in some areas and those flare tabs would not go into place. And there were a few times where I had to take like a hobby knife and push and work that tab and kind of 
wedge it or a slot and kind of wedge it open a little bit more to get the tab to go into place. So that's one of the issues I have with this and I had contacted, um, this goes back to the story about getting that replacement part. I made a comment in my message to the individual that I spoke with who sent me the model, the other uh, Megatron MU, or not Megatron, the other MU Transformers model that I've yet to get to, they sent the one spare part, but honestly I was having problems with the with several pieces off of that same sheet. It wasn't, as the build went on, it didn't become a constant reoccurring problem. It happened a couple more times and I was able to move on and I knew how to deal with it. It just took more time, but that was one little irritation of this particular build. The flare tabs were kind of nice in some situations, disadvantage in some other situations and with those particular slots being too small, a real disadvantage. There were some situations with parts that had really really small narrow parts where you had tabs that you had to bend right at right angles along the edge of the part where I found that it was most helpful to hold the part itself along that edge with something like tweezers or pliers and then fold the tab over with my finger because trying to fold the tab over itself would have been too much of the part and things wouldn't line up and that's one of the issues I ran into and I, I can't remember I think maybe some of the um, some of these fin pieces may have been an issue like that, but there were some other pieces elsewhere. Because you've got a lot of little decorative small pieces that go inside, like the gold pieces right here. It's just a straight gold piece with tabs on the end that you have to fold up. Some of them have slots where the tabs fold in, they go over the slot. Some of them have tabs on the small part that fold at right angle that go into something to connect them. And some of those parts I had trouble not damaging the part trying to fold over that one tab. And when it comes time to put this gun together, a couple of notes about that. For one, since it's solid black, even though I have a considerable amount of lighting around me when I build this model, because I have soft light boxes with very large bulbs in them to try and light things with white light so that the camera picks up the detail, it was so black that looking down in trying to find out whether or not I got the tabs twisted over in place was actually difficult. At one or two points I had to pull out a separate flashlight to shine down in there to see what I was doing because it was difficult to even see if I was hitting the slot. Funny, not impossible, but I thought that was kind of funny. Another thing is I think a couple of these pieces I may have folded the wrong way around so you'll see that some have the line detail around and some are completely smooth and according to the box, I think they're all supposed to have that sort of detail tuning to them. And the instructions in the very beginning, and I kept kind of forgetting about this and not paying attention because I'm not accustomed to it. There's a red shading that's indication that something is being bent or folded. And that's very much like Metal Earth does, where they usually give a reddish color to something that needs to be bent over or folded or shaped. But when something is gray, shaded gray, it's indicating that it is a non-textured surface. I kept missing that little bit, and that's one of the reasons I got some of those parts inside out. And once it's done and formed and pieces added, I don't want to go back and try to change it and break something. It kind of becomes a point where now I've just personalized this object from my oversight, and it's just going to be mine and unique. But the the, the orange, orangish color kind of a dull orange, not the best with colors, means to bend the piece over and the gray is indicating the inside. So that's, it's not labeled saying this is textured, non-textured with symbols, it's labeled with the gray color. And one more thing interesting to me to note, uh, the Megatron did this a little bit, but Optimus Prime did it a lot more. Just like the Megatron, you build it in sections. The Optimus Prime, you build, like I've said already, I think the, uh, torso body port is in three pieces and then you do a leg, you do another leg, you do an arm and gun, the other arm, and then all those come together. Well, on the last page or two before you bring everything together, after you've got the large sections built, you build this cap. There's a cap that goes on top of each arm and there's a sort of hip cap that goes on before you put the arms on right here kind of hard to see right here in the hip on both sides and as you're building the model these are wide open because 
you've got this access point on the hip. When you put the leg in, you go into that access point and you fold over the tabs or twist them if you can. There's not much room. I folded mine over. And then once you've got the legs on, you put those caps on to finish the detail. You attach the arms, this big top open spot allows you to get in there and twist and fold the tabs to secure everything together. And then you put that cap on and then there's one other place, one other side somewhere, I'm trying to remember. Oh, there's, there's, on the red section there's a side, one side is built into it and the other side is open and has just a little flap that also you use to access access with the tool to get in there when you're connecting the three different torso sections together and that makes sense that makes perfect sense that they would do do it in that fashion to leave an access point to be able to better connect the pieces and he's fairly solid he's a little wobbly but i'm not too worried about him coming apart and falling over so just like with any build there's a lot of attention to and a lot of detail to pay attention to there's definitely going to be struggles there's pieces some pieces fit better than others you know, I had some issues with these arm pieces. There's a, a part that kind of curves over and getting all of these little narrow pieces into their spot was a little bit of a fight. Some of the other sections come together nice and easily. These window sections come together fairly easily. The grill, not so much. It was a lot of fight involved in getting that aligned. These upper leg sections with the inside part being delicate and easy to knock over. I spent so much time fighting with it trying to get those pieces connected that I ended up breaking one twice and and breaking two different pieces off of one part that helped hold the entire leg together so I had to use some glue to help hold that together so take your time and be very careful and certainly for reference sake if you'd like watch some of the build videos to see the struggles that I went against in more detail and how I overcome them or how you can avoid making those same mistakes all in all i'm very glad to have him finished i'm very happy to have built him it's a learning experience uh definitely a challenge challenge that i feel firmly that i've worked my way up having after having built close to 200 other models before i got to this point so i definitely had the confidence to tackle this project and recommend that you get at least a few models under your belt before you do it it's certainly worth the price it's and it's been interesting for me to see how in my mind there's been a small evolution from the optimus prime build to the megatron build because the optimus prime g1 came first the megatron g1 came later and i can definitely see in my mind how some of the parts come together a little better and how some of the design is made so that it more easily connects together with less difficulty and less chance of breaking things i i feel like they over time have learned that okay this while it worked doing this particular part this way there's a better way to do it and we're going to implement that in megatron and i talked a little bit about the leg piece here versus i think it was an arm piece on megatron that was pieces inside of pieces the way that they came together over top of each other the inside piece was more solid and it was easily able to handle attaching those pieces without folding in. The fact that that H piece on the inside of Optimus Prime's leg didn't have any sort of cross support to give it sturdiness so that once you tried to wrap the other pieces around it, the, the inside would just fold in and it was just such a fight back and forth, it broke pieces. Not the best of design in my mind, but there was things like that and other things that just seemed to be more thought out and better implemented and from what i'm told and i've yet to get to the newer models that process has continued i can't remember where i heard the comment from but someone had made the comment that one of the newer models instead of having all these grill pieces that you have to attach individually while that gives such a nice detail they're already attached and you just flip them out which is something that you see a lot of with the metal earth models, the pieces, the slats are there, you just gotta kind of turn them out to give them that 3D detail as opposed to attaching each piece, which is a bit of a struggle. So I've taken some of the techniques that I've already learned and advanced them a little bit more to make this work, more use of magnets to hold things in places, and more use of the sculpting tools, because with this model, the size of it is, there's a lot of times where you're using long nose pliers or sculpting tools to reach deep inside 
to secure tabs because there's just no other way to do it. And I know I'll use a lot of tools in making these models. I want to do a decent job of it. The amount of tools that I have certainly come in very handy for making something as big and complex as the Optimus Prime or Megatron builds as big as this. And I can go on and on and on talking more and more about this, but that's the gist of it. Lovely build, really good, uh, really good fun. I can see where there's possibility of some improvement. It's definitely a challenge getting all of it together without breaking something. And honestly, you're going to possibly break something. Now it's, it's not just a matter of trying not to break something. It's a matter of recovery if you do. The right kind of super glue is your friend. I'm particularly fond of Loctite, though I hear with others there's there are other good options as well. General super glue doesn't seem to work well, but Loctite seems to do good, though I don't have the gel type. I've heard that's better. One of these days I will invest in the gel type and see if that works even better. Excellent build. Lots of time. Over 24 hours on this one. Very much like the Megatron build. Such a wonderful piece to add to my collection. It towers over everything else except Megatron and the Mega R2-D2. He's still a little bit bigger, but Mega R2, nowhere near, not quite as detailed. I don't want to say nowhere near, but not quite as detailed as this. There's a lot of detail crammed into here, and you work for it. You definitely work for it. I'll leave it at that. I've said it several times. I've got all the build videos all different sections up on my YouTube channel if you need to take a peek at how I did something if you run into problems if you've been working on these 3D metal models and you've got some experience under your belt and you're ready for the next challenge these transform models from MU will definitely give you a challenge and they're much bigger they take more time and they're wonderful to display I've got another one coming I've got one of the newer bumblebees sitting in the weight for me to put together. It appears that someone from MU saw my Megatron build and liked it and I guess as a way, maybe in a way, thank you. They want, they have decided to send me the Bumblebee model to build myself. So that's coming up. That's not the only thing coming up because I've got a lot of other models to, that are sitting in queue that I want to put together as well. Glad to have this finished. It's time to move on. Thank you very much to Andrew who sent me this model, my, probably my biggest supporter. He sent me this model quite some behind back to put together. And I'm just now finishing with it. I apologize for it taking so long. Uh, it came at the same time as Megatron had come as well as a few other things. So it just was a matter of getting to it right there at the holidays, slowed things down for the new year. Hopefully there'll be more time, but thank you very much for this model. And thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for contributing to the to me, contributing to financial freedom to be able to build these models and, and get these models and do these videos, both the build videos, the review videos, and the news videos. It is because of your support that I'm able to continue doing this. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep on keeping on. Thank you.